Bye Beans. Today we're talking tattoos and it's actually kind of funny because you can't see any of them with what I'm wearing right now, but it's been a couple years since I last posted a tattoo tour video and it's been highly requested ever since because I've accumulated quite a lot of new tattoos since then. I think in total now I have about 20 or 21 tattoos, but they're all on the smaller side for the most part. So I kind of think of them as little clusters rather than individual tattoos. And there are a couple that I honestly forget that I have because they're so tiny and they're in places where you can't really see them yourself. So we'll go through, I'll show you the new pieces and the old pieces. I'll talk a little bit about pain level and also share a story if there is one to share about the tattoo. I just recently got some ephemeral tattoos, which are my newest pieces and they finally healed. So I just figured what better time than now to show you everything that I have. Cause I'm kind of at a place where I feel pretty content with what I have. I have no plans to get anything new. I have no projects in mind. I don't anticipate any new tattoos in the near future but I'm not making any promises. <laughs> So we'll start with the ephemeral tattoos because those are the most recent ones that I got. And they're pretty interesting because they use a proprietary ink that is made to fade in about six to nine months. So it's kind of like a semi-permanent, it's still the same process where it's actually penetrating your skin with the ink. Um, so everything about it feels like getting a conventional tattoo. It's just that in about six to nine months time. So I would say it's a great option for anyone who's a little bit indecisive, or maybe you just want to see how something looks before you commit to something more permanent. As somebody with a lot of tattoos already, I actually thought it was kind of fun because I could see how this ephemeral tattoo would line up with my existing tattoos and just kind of play around with it. And I've kind of made a promise to my grandma that as long as she lived, I would not add any more tattoos. I don't know the best way to show you, but there's no real meaning behind the little sprinkle tattoos that I got. I kind of just wanted to fill in gaps um, because this arm that I have is pretty spaced out with all the little minis that I have all over. So it's kind of like salt and peppery. And I just thought it would be a nice way to break up some of the tattoos I have and continue on from one of my bigger pieces, which features a lot of stars and sprinkles. I will say the collarbone, this is my first collarbone tattoo and it was really painful. <laughs> the location was, I just was not expecting that much pain. Even though it's so close to your arm, it is so much more painful. Um, the tattoo artist that did my tattoos was a regular tattoo artist and he was great. I'll leave his handle on the screen too in case you're interested. But um, yeah, pretty painful on the collarbone. I would give it um, maybe like a six out of 10 or maybe a seven out of 10 because it's the most painful one I have, but I know that there are other areas of the body that are more painful. And then the ones down the arm were pretty pain-free. I feel like the arm is a good place to start with tattoos. Uh, you could really tolerate quite a bit of pain. And yeah, they kind of trail down and then you'll see that it sort of ties into some of the stars that I have from this bigger piece. And this was one of my, well, it is my only bigger piece. The calcifer tattoo I have is just, it's a calcifer tattoo. And I got it because, I mean, we love calcifer and Miyazaki films. And that was a huge part of my childhood growing up. So if you haven't seen the movie, Howl's Moving Castle, um, I think it's a really cute one, but I love it. And I got it done by my friend Shawnee, who is in LA and he's amazing with fine line detail work. So if you like like smaller, intricate pieces, he's your guy. I'll leave his information in the description box as well. Calcifer pain level, I would say, like a two out of 10 for me. Moving down the arm, I have this one kind of to the side of my elbow or below the side, below diagonal from my elbow. And it says handle with care. And this is like, this one actually did have a meaning. This one I got with Chani as well. Um, and the idea was just to like remind myself to handle everything in life and myself included with care. And um, yeah, just to handle everything with grace. And I really like the font. It's kind of like a very dainty font, I think. So I love that. The handle with care tattoo is also a two out of 10. Um, pretty pain-free. I think the arm is a great place to start for that. At the back of my elbow, I have this one that says sorry. And I got this tattoo because it was kind of a joke um, with a double meaning, I guess. The first was that my mom and my grandma kept telling me, please don't get any more tattoos. And I kept getting tattoos. But also I feel like I am somebody that apologizes for everything. And I really wanted to remind myself to stop saying sorry about everything that I do because it's a really bad habit that I feel like probably a lot of you can relate to. Um, but yeah, I am just over apologetic about so many things in my life. And it's something that I really wanted to work on at the time. And then the back of my arm elbow area, also a two out of 10. That one I didn't even, I don't think I really even felt it when it was happening. So 
recommend that as a spot if you're a little nervous. Moving down even further, this is my biggest piece and my only big piece with like shading because I prefer it to be a little bit lighter. And I shared this in my last video, but I originally wasn't very happy with this piece at all because I was going back and forth with the artist a lot. And it's like that moment when you get your hair cut and the hairstylist is like, do you like it? And you're like, yeah, I love it. And on the inside you're crying, except it's a tattoo. So you can't just grow your hair back. Um, and I was pretty shaken up because it was my biggest piece and one of my earliest pieces also, but I've kind of grown to love it. And the meaning was basically um, supposed to be a reminder of like family actually, which is a little bit ironic because at the time my parents didn't really know that I had that many tattoos. Um, but the cherry blossoms, I feel like really resembled my mom and just the fact that they're Japanese, of course, as a flower. I feel that she's a strong person, even though she's kind of delicate at the same time, if that makes sense. And cherry blossoms are known for their beautiful, but very short-lived season and life. So not to make it sound like she has like a short life, it's just more that everybody really appreciates and loves and thinks cherry blossoms are so beautiful, but they don't realize how delicate they are, if that makes sense, and how fleeting. So it's just like something to be appreciated and they're Japanese, so you know, that kind of symbolizes my mom. And I put them at the bottom because I feel like she's a very grounding person that keeps me with my feet on the ground. <laughs> and then um, at the top, I have some stars, um, the moon, and that was supposed to symbolize like the universe and trusting in the universe and that there's a plan for me. Um, and the clouds in between are kind of where I feel like I land. And that's just like to be guided by the universe and all these things, but also remember to be grounded and um, yeah. That's kind of the meaning of that. And these little stars around them, I actually <laughs> did a lot of these myself because I bought a tattoo pen. Don't recommend doing this, but I did it. And I just kind of wanted to experiment with adding a couple of stars to make the piece feel a little bit more integrated into my arm instead of just being like this big chunky piece because I did not want any of this shading originally, but the artist just like started and I had no choice at that point, but to finish it out. So. That's that tattoo. I got this done at Gristle Tattoo in New York. I would still recommend them, just like put your foot down about what you want. And yeah, they're an all vegan tattoo studio, so you don't have to worry about that. This little one is an okay conversation heart and it's there's no meaning for this one at all. I just thought it would be funnier than getting like a conventional conversation heart that's like, I love you or whatever. Um, my friend who used to do my lash extensions back in the day, she decided to become a tattoo artist and she wanted to practice. So I let her just do it on me because I really trusted her work. And yeah, it's a, it's a cutie. It's really small and dainty, but I really like it. This on the outside of my wrist, I did this myself again with a tattoo gun and there's no meaning. It's just the same continuation of that star pattern that I kind of have everywhere. So I feel like it ties together, kind of. Um, this was my first tattoo ever. For this one, I feel like meaning was supposed to be deep, but I realize now that it's one of the most basic tattoos that I could have gotten because it says like serendipity. And I feel like it's just, I don't know. It's a very your first tattoo, if you know what I mean. Uh, I got this one done semi-illegally in China because you are supposed to have like your passport or an ID to show that you're 18 or have your parents take you, but I found some sketchy place to do it for me. And as a result of that, it's kind of crooked. So that's like, it's what you get. But the funny story behind this one is that I wrote this on my arm every day with like pen and Sharpie. And I would like do it in front of my parents to make them think that it was fake. And then I thought like, by the time I get it done for real, they'll be like, oh, of course, she's just like writing it down. But I think we went on vacation somewhere and we're at the beach and then my cover was blown. So <laughs> that's the story behind that one. And at the time I was really depressed and I thought that this basic tattoo would like do a lot to inspire me, but I think it was more just like a reminder for me to not be self-harming and stuff like that. So um, even though it's imperfect, I still really like it. I feel like it's part of my story and just the journey. And I don't strive for perfection in life. I don't think that's possible. So it's just a very human tattoo and reminds me of a time in my life for sure. Pain level on this one was definitely a little higher because it was my first one. So I didn't know what to expect. I would give it maybe like a three out of 10 though. Still very bearable. Okay, moving down my hand, this one, I also got done with Chani and it says, okay, but the little O has a smiley face in it. Um, I 
don't know why I got this one. I think it's just like, I thought it would be kind of cute in the moment and I wanted some more hand tattoos so that you could differentiate my videos from other people when you see like my cooking content, like close-ups and stuff like that. Um, at one point I wanted to have tons of tiny tattoos all over my hands, but I decided against it because I just feel like it's quite a commitment and they bleed out a lot, quite a bit too. And they're pretty painful. Pain level for this one was like, mm, maybe like a, four out of 10, because it got very tender, especially when we're going over it multiple times. Next one is this heart finger tattoo. I did this one myself, I hand poked it. This was pretty painful, mostly because hand poking a tattoo is super painful, because you have to like keep going over it and it's like a, like it hurts a lot. <laughs> so that and finger is a really sensitive area. And this tattoo, um, I would give it a, mm, no, I would give it a four out of 10 still, I think but um, it's just a heart. And I just kind of wanted to see what it would look like to have a side finger tattoo. And then this last one, I also gave to myself. It's a teeny tiny pinky one. <sighs> I did this one with a tattoo gun and it is uneven. So I'll probably edit it a little bit <laughs> to make it more even. No story behind this one. It's also that similar star theme that we have going on. The other arm, um, what do we have here? So this wrist one was one of my least favorite tattoos. You can look back at my old video and I have it there before it was covered up. Honestly, I'm not really a fan of the cover up either because I think that this wrist area, like my arms just kind of rotate weirdly and it looks crooked, but also it's a lot bigger than I ever wanted. And I sort of want this arm to be pretty clean. So I'm not sure if I really love any of the tattoos on this arm, except for one, which is my cat. This tattoo originally was a hand poke tattoo and at the time it was like a five out of 10 pain because we had to like keep going over it many, many times. Um, but then the cover up at that point was maybe like a two out of 10 because I'm so used to it. And Chani did that for me. I think it looks much better than how it looked before because my sister would make fun of me and say it looked like weed. <laughs> but like, it was supposed to be a bunch of time, like the herb, but uh, it did not look that way. So this is better than what it was before, but I still don't love it. So maybe I'll do something about it. Maybe I won't, I don't know. I just feel like roses are pretty basic when it comes to like tattoos that you can get that are flowers. And then um, the cat tattoo I got because my family cat passed away and she was our first cat and I love her so much. Um, and I just drew this little doodle on a piece of paper and I knew I wanted to get it tattooed. So my friend Chani did this one for me as well. This one, pretty pain-free, honestly, is probably a two out of 10, if that. One of my least favorite tattoos, the whole tattoo, because I just feel like I get so many questions about it and it's very dark and bold. Um, again, I am not the best about asserting what I want. And at the time that I got it, I was in like a really dark place and I was trying to rem remind myself like, you're whole on your own, you know, but People were asking me, is it whole for Whole Foods? Even the artist that I told, I was like, yeah, I wanna get whole tattooed. And she was like, whole, like H-O-L-E. And I was like, no, like whole. And so yeah, there's something needs to happen with that one. I don't know. It's very dark though and very blocky compared to like my sorry tattoo, which is a finer text that I really like. On the back of my ears, I have a sun and a moon or is it a sun and a moon? A sun and a moon and I got these hand poked, but I honestly don't ever really notice them and I often forget that I have them. Um, it's really only when I tie up my hair and somebody else notices it. The pain level for these was pretty not great because it was hand poked, so I felt like I could feel it tapping into my skull and I would give it a five out of 10 for pain, but maybe if you're doing it with a needle gun, it would be less painful. And this was the same thing, just to kind of like ground myself between the sun and the moon. Yeah, there are a couple more that I feel like really need work um, or that I'm not loving right now. So those will be excluded, but I hope this will be helpful for you if you're thinking about tattoos. And what I have to say about tattoos, if you're kind of on the fence is that I feel like you should go for it if you've thought about it for at least six months. Think about it and then kind of wait till you forget about it. And then if you still feel like you wanna get it when you revisit the idea, then I think it's a good idea. Sentimental tattoos are great too, but I've definitely made some rash decisions when I was in darker times of my life. Like I said, with like the whole tattoo and this like big piece that I probably wouldn't have gotten if I was in like the right state of mind. So if you're feeling like depressed or you're going through something, pause for a moment before you get it because um, those are probably the tattoos that I feel like need the most redoing or sprucing up. Um, but that being said, I also think that it's important not to take tattoos too seriously because now that I have so many, I can tell you that with time, I've kind of 
put less meaning and weight into them. Um, some of them I think are purely just for aesthetics that I feel like are fun or something that I wanted to try or thought would look cool. They are a pain to remove, but it is possible. Um, you can get them lasered. I've heard that it's much more painful than the original getting it done, but just it's an option. You know, you could also get a cover up like I did with my wrist thing here. Um, so yeah, don't be too afraid, but be cautious if you're gonna get a tattoo and I promise they don't hurt as much as you think. I feel like most people get one tattoo and then they realize it doesn't hurt that much and then it starts like the pipeline of wanting so many. But at this moment, where I'm at right now, I'm very happy with where everything is. It feels pretty balanced. I kind of want to do something about this arm. I don't know what yet though. Happy with this arm. I don't know if I'll get these ephemeral tattoos done permanently, but I am enjoying it for the time being. I just kind of like the choice to look like I have tattoos or not based on the clothing that I'm wearing. So um, as of right now, I can wear clothes and you can't even tell that I have any and I kind of like that. I also want to mention that I did get my brows um, nanobladed, which is like even smaller than getting them microbladed, I think. And I talked about it in my makeup video, so it's not a secret or a surprise. And they're so subtle that it almost looks like I didn't do anything because a lot of the tattoos that I would see back in the day were like, you know, black Sharpie eyebrow looking tattoos. Um, so I really like them. They make me feel like I don't need to put anything on my brows and I don't, I just put gel on them to kind of fluff them up. But as for pain level on that one, you do get numbing cream, but it was maybe a five out of 10. Um, so just be warned if you're gonna get them done. And I'll also leave details for who did my brows because I think you have to find someone who is so great about not making them look like, like you, you know what I mean, like blocky and, Eyebrows are important. <laughs> Eyebrows, be careful. To close out the video, my sister Avery's gonna show some of hers that she has too. It's from Adventure Time. It's Breezy the Bee. Oh, this is a baby's breath. This is my favorite flower. Oh, and this one's a butterfly. And then Chani redid this one because I also got it questionably done <laughs> in Shanghai, but it's a butterfly. Yes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's been requested for a long time. And um, if I get any more in the future, I guess I'll do another updated video. If you have questions about getting tattoos, let me know and I'll leave details for as many of the artists that I can find down below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and give it a thumbs up. 